All right, you guys, we're going to try this again. Now, the first show that we tried to do never got off the ground. I was talking for an entire hour to myself. And when I came back into the stream, it started as soon as I came back into the stream. So they're playing games. This is very important. This may be one of the most important shows that we've ever done. Let's wait until at least several of you get in here. Before we start the show, just to make sure we're connected and before I start. And then we'll get back into the show. I don't know how that happened, but it happened and this is where we're at. So, no big deal. So, let's get into this. Now I'll be checking back in periodically to make sure we're connected. Now. We've all heard the stories about cattle and other animals being killed after a UFO sighting. And not just killed, but actually mutilated. But I can almost guarantee that you have not heard this story yet. This goes all the way back to 1977 in the middle of Queens, New York. This was the site of the World's Fair. Now, there were two World's Fairs. There was one in 1939 and there was one in 1964 at this very same site. Now, before we read the historical reports, what makes this story so unique is that Tommy Lee Jones stated in the film Men in Black that Queens was the site of one of the very first UFO encounters in which aliens revealed themselves to the world leaders. Many of them settled in Queens. These were the words of Tommy Lee Jones in the film Men in Black. So let's read about what happened in 1977 in this article titled The Flushing Meadows Park Zoo Animal Mutilations and UFO Mystery. Now, let me check in with you guys. Okay, are we good? Can you guys hear me? Sound is good? All right, let's keep going with this. That was so weird. Never had that happen before, you guys. Flushing Meadow Parks again became the home to an international exposition after it was chosen as a location for the 64 New York World's Fair. After the fair closed, the area again was left with a few prominent buildings from the event, including the Unisphere, the Heliport, which became the catering establishment, and the Observation Towers, featured in Men in Black, filmed with Will Smith and Tommy Lee Jones. The area also became home to Shea Stadium, the USTA Billie Jean King National Tennis Center, a zoo, and other facilities used for swimming, aquatic, and boating events. During the 64-65 World's Fair, there were several UFO sightings that made the news. Most were described as lights in the sky and were explained away as aircraft taking off and landing from the LaGuardia Airport. However, it should be noted that people in this area are used to seeing all kinds of aircraft and aircraft lights associated with landings and takes, takeoffs from LaGuardia. They know when they see something different in the sky or not, in the day or night sky. The sightings of strange lights above the old fairgrounds continued after the World's Fair ended in 1966. Oh, and in 1966, one of the most startling sightings occurred. Hundreds of motorists driving on the Grand Central Parkway side of the Flushing Meadows Park reported seeing a large luminescent blue-green object which looked like a glowing dirigible that came into view and then descended into the lake. At about 7.40 in the evening, a press report from those days stated, So, this article goes on, and I'll put this in the pinned comment, to talk about the swamp area, and that this area was called the Valley of Ashes. And upon this Valley of Ashes was built the World's Fair. Both World's Fair, in fact. Now, this swamp aspect to all this is repeated in the film Tomorrowland, which also is set at the World's Fair in a future World's Fair or an alternative dimension World's Fair. And... The girl goes into this alternate dimension, and when she comes out, her brother tells her she smells like the swamp. Drain the swamp. Now this goes on because there's more to this story. 
After the 3940 World's Fair ended, many of the structures from the fair were leveled and the area became known as Flushing Meadows C-O-R-O-N-A Park. A few of the buildings that remain included the New York State Pavilion, which was used as the United Nations. This is it right here. Now, in the film Men in Black, there is a kind of like a United Nations-esque type of area where all of the different nations of aliens come together. And they're in this building. And in the backdrop, you see the image of these, this New York Pavilion saucers. So, there is a front United Nations, but there's probably also a demonic United Nations that houses some of these entities. So then it goes on. This article talks about these bizarre mutilations that occurred at a zoo. They also talk about this place being demolished. And the ground being taken away. We'll get into that as well. A number of observ ob observers said that the object appeared to correspond to the descriptions of UFOs reported in Michigan the previous week, which Air Force experts had attributed to swamp gas discharge from lake bottoms in the springtime. There's the swamp aspect to this again. This explanation did not satisfy everybody in Queens. Some thought that maybe the Martians wanted to visit the World's Fair and didn't know it was over. More recently, a number of reports came in about white and green lights in a triangular formation seen moving back and forth over Flushing Meadows Park during the 4th of July 2008. Some of the witnesses said that the light suddenly appeared, disappeared, and reappeared again between 10 p.m. and 3 a.m. on those dates. However, strange lights are not the only bizarre phenomenon associated with UFOs that occurred in the park. In 68, the Flushing Meadows Zoo opened in Flushing Meadows Park on the grounds of the 64-65 World's Fair. Although small in scale, the zoo had a number of exhibits and plenty of animals, including sea lions, black bears, sheep, bison, mountain lions, coyotes, bald eagles, birds, and wolves. Since its opening, the zoo has become associated with several disturbing UFO events. The first may have occurred in 1977. After several nights of UFO sightings above the park, wolves managed to escape from the zoo. On November 30th, 1977, now this wolf aspect to this is important. Because the wolf represents the devil. I've been watching this series called The Stand. It's a reboot of the original Stephen King Stand. It's out right now. And the bad guy, the devil, he often appears as a wolf. And in that series, he goes up against the good side. And they live in Boulder. I think it's Boulder, Colorado. And the bad side lives in Las Vegas, Sin City. And Whoopi Goldberg pl plays this prophetess for the good team. And then there's a bad guy. But he also always confronts her as a wolf. As this all goes back to the Looper cult. Ancient Egypt, Anubis, the dog god. He was one of the original gods of Egypt. Also, Wepwowet, which was also a dog god. He actually predates Anubis. In the ancient Egyptian cult of dog worship. Now it says here, official reports said that 12 wolves clawed their way through a chain link fence. Surrounding their pen and killed several other animals. Until they were recaptured by Parks Department personnel and police. However, a caretaker working there at the time said that while making his rounds, he found several animals missing. Not just the wolves and others dead. The dead animals did not look like they had been killed by predators. They did not look like they had been killed by predators. He also said that none of the animals' pens or enclosures had been unlocked, damaged, or tampered with. 
There have been a number of odd instances where UFO sightings are associated with sudden appearance or disappearance of animals. Animals found to be missing from zoos turn up elsewhere without explanation. Wild animals not native to the area suddenly appear in the area also without explanation. All this tends to occur during times when UFOs are observed nearby. The caretaker present during the 77 event first contacted me in 89 about another and far more disturbing occurrence at the zoo. He and several others that worked there met me near the area of the zoo. It was being rebuilt at the time and they claimed that the reason for that was something so disturbing that I still have trouble grasping the enormity of what happened. Now I'll, I'll put this in the pinned comment after the show so you can read this article for yourself. Now let's read what happened next. After seeing me on a local television news broadcast talking about a major UFO sighting and landing in nearby Casena Park, several employees of the zoo called my UFO hotline and asked to meet with me. After a phone conversation with one of them, I met them at Flushing Meadows Park. We talked about what happened at the zoo. It began with two nights of UFO sightings in 87. Green and white balls of light that formed into all sorts of shapes hovered directly over the zoo and caused the animals to become greatly disturbed. Due to the budget cuts and because there were police in the park all night long, caretakers and other zoo employees were no longer present at the zoo all night. The last one would leave around 11 and show up around 7.30 a.m. to open up the zoo for the other employees. On the morning after the two nights of UFO sightings in 87, the caretaker and several other employees opened up the zoo and were horrified to find every animal in the zoo dead. Not just dead, but strangely mutilated. The caretaker and other employees told me that all of the animals were still locked or secured in their pens and exhibits with no sign of forced or keyed entry. Although they were unable to photograph any of the animals, they said all of them looked as though they had been surgically autopsied or examined. Despite the deaths and apparent mutilation, little or no blood was present. You guys, this is what we call insanguination. This is what vampires do. They suck the blood out of animals and people. Needless to say, the zoo was closed without explanation and no trespassing signs were placed near the entrances and on fences surrounding it. Parks Department personnel and pe police were summoned. The zoo was closed within hours and all the dead animal carcasses were removed. At that point, plans were made for the zoo to be leveled. Officially, the deaths were never never happened, and the press showed no interest in the matter, if it was even reported to them at all. With plans already in the works to refurbish zoo buildings, it was not that hard to arrange for the entire zoo property to be rebuilt from the ground up with new ground. All of the old buildings and enclosures were destroyed and several inches of dirt were removed from the area of the zoo. Does this sound familiar? What happened at Handy Sook? What happened to the buildings at Blind 11? Everything was carted off, including the top levels of dirt. You know, when Abel was killed, the first murder in the Bible, God said he could hear the blood of Abel crying up to heaven. Creepy stuff. During this time, none of the employees that spoke to me were allowed near the place. Most were assigned to other temporary duties in the park. When it officially reopened in 88, the zoo had already undergone a $16 million rebuilding. There's that number 88 again. And why are they pouring all this money into a zoo? All new buildings, exhibits, and animals were now available to the public. Let's keep going. The zoo employees that spoke to me said that the animal deaths and mutilations were eventually explained away as the work of vandals or ritualistic killers in the internal report. Now this is interesting because my latest videos, they've been putting KEW notifications under the video. When we're not even talking about that. The letter KEW. And in there they talk about that that movement believed that there is this going on. We know this is going on. However, they point out that vandals 
would have made all kinds of noise trying to kill the animals. They had to break into most of the pens and exhibits and would have left significant amount of blood and other evidence behind. None of these things were present. No alarms went off. And the park police and other employees working in nearby areas on the night in question heard nothing. This is right out of an X-Files episode, you guys. The only reason that the caretaker employees contacted me with their stories was because they felt that the possibility existed that the same thing could happen again and found the previous explanation for the deaths and mutilations to be ridiculous. In fact, UFOs were seen over the zoo again in 1991. At that time, there were no deaths or mutilations, but the same employees told me that several anim animals were found to be missing from the zoo. They were not specific about which animals were missing, and by that time, they were in fear of losing their jobs. Again, the zoo was closed without explanation. During the unannounced temporary closure, yet another expensive zoo upgrade took place. All this money pouring into the zoo. This was this one not only involved some new exhibit, exhibits and rebuilds, but the installation of sophisticated security devices. A few local papers noticed the enclosure and asked questions, but officials merely said that the funds had suddenly become available for an upgrade and that it needed to be completed before the money ran out. The zoo reopened to the public in 92. This is all before the Men in Black film released. In 1995. No further incidents have occurred that I'm aware of, but all of the employees that first contacted me in 1989 have retired. UFO sightings continue over Flushing Meadow Park. It's important to understand that a number of animal disappearances and mutilations associated with UFO sightings have occurred over many have occurred for many years throughout the world. So you're probably thinking to yourself, Casey, why does all this matter? Well, the New York Pavilion is now undergoing another surge of money. $24 million project to restore the pavilion. And there it is right there, right out of the Men in Black film. The site of first contact. Let's read. Look at the date. November 11th. November is the ninth month. In the Roman calendar. So what this really says is Blind 11, 2019. Now let's keep reading here. Five years after five years of halting progress, NYC Parks officially broke ground last week on a $24 million project to preserve the pavilion in Flushing Meadows. They're in our face, you guys. What's that word mean? Look at this. Now we're going to look at this in Google Earth. But what's weird about this is there is that there is a theater attached to this. It's called Queen's Theater. And it now will become the site of the Mass VC. This is dated January 7th, 2021, just a couple weeks ago. This is where they will have a 24-7 mass VC site. Now, let's go into Google Earth and look at this because this is crazy. There is the crown. Crown of thorns, it looks like to me. There is the New York Pavilion. And there is the Queen's Theater right here. This looks a lot like the the building in iPet Goat 3 where the phoenix flies over it with, with the uh, stork, the stork-like phoenix holding the baby in iPet Goat 3. It's kind of like what this looks like to me. But we covered all this because we found Apollo's arrow. We'll talk about Apollo's arrow next. Forms a trifecta, the world's fair site with all of the beginnings of the Mr. T family. And over here with the first supermarket, it forms Apollo's arrow. And this is where the T 
family grew up all the way back to the 1920s before the World's Fair. We covered all that in other videos. So what is it about this place that makes it so special to the elite? I guess we have to wait and see, but I can tell you this. Something is going on with Apollo. Because Apollo is the god who creates disease with his arrows. But then he cures it. And what does he require? He requires sacrifice. Animal sacrifice, in fact. Animal mutilation sacrifice. It says here in the Iliad, Apollo is the healer, but also the bringer of disease. And death with his arrows. He sends plague. The god who sends disease can also prevent it. Is this starting to sink in? This is why they deleted the first live stream. But in order to stop it, he requires sacrifice called the Hecatomb. What is the Hecatomb? This is it right here. It is a hundred head of cattle as well as human sacrifice. As few as 12 could make up a hecatomb. Does that sound like the wolves? The 12 wolves that escaped from the zoo? And look down here. This is what they do to the animals. They are flayed, which means mutilated. Wow. Now this goes even deeper. Because you're probably wondering, well, Casey, what does Apollo have to do with any of this? Was he even at the World's Fair in 1966? He absolutely was. In the form of the Apollo mission. Here's a postcard from the 65 World's Fair. See that? And look at this. This was called Space Park that appeared at the World's Fair as well. And it was all about Apollo, the Apollo missions. Now, let's go back one, because what I didn't show you yet was this. Apollo and his sister Artemis. Uh, that was Mr. T's space program, Artemis. Remember that? Can bring death with their arrows. The conception that diseases and death come from invisible shots sent by supernatural beings or magicians is common in Germanic and Norse mythology. In the Greek mythology, Artemis was the leader of the nymphs. The elf shot originally indicated disease or death attributed to elves, but it was also later tested denoting stone arrowheads, which were used by witches to harm people. Healing rituals. You guys starting to see what's happening here. Now, here's where things go off the rails. Because you're probably asking yourself, okay, Casey, Let's follow your line of thinking with this Apollo sun worship. So in order for you to be correct, Apollo would have also had to appear at the 1939 World's Fair. Was he there? Yes, he was. This is the Heliclean. It was a spiral ramp surrounding the original perisphere globe. Here's the Heliclean right here spiral ramp. It ended at this hollow hypodermic needle called the trilon. And in fact, there is a real hypodermic needle called a trilon. 1966 was when that was invented. And this heliclean also was the abode of Apollo himself. Mount Helicon and look at this. You almost get the drift here. 
Look at this. This is the Heliclean. This is from the World's Fair. Look at how this swoops up here. It goes from here and it goes around up the side of this mountain. And this was the abode of Apollo. And Dionysus. Done a lot of work on Dionysus. Let's keep going with this because there's more. Because here is the largest sundial in the world. This was at the 1939 World's Fair. And it was called Time and Fates of Man. So we're just following the rabbit trail here. We're following the Apollo breadcrumb trail. Here it is here. The largest sundial in the world. It was 80 feet tall. Let's take a look at this. Here it is right here. Now, who were the fates? Well, here they are right here. Underneath the sundial in 1939, 38-39. And according to legend, Apollo tricked the fates. In other words, he tricked fate. How did he do that? He got them drunk. One myth says that Apollo tricked the fates into letting his friend Admetus live beyond his assigned lifetime. Apollo tricked time. He got the fates drunk and they agreed to accept the death of a substitute in the place of Admetus. Are you seeing where all this is headed? Now, what else? What other sculptures and statues were there? at the 1939 World's Fair that related back to Apollo. Well, this one is very creepy. Remember, Apollo was the inventor of the harp or the lyre. And here they had a harp made out of 12 black men. They were at graduated heights. Twelve stylized black singers in graduated heights that symbolize the strings of the harp. Here they are right here. This could be mockery of the twelve disciples. Remember, Apollo was the god of music. Now there was also a second sundial. Let's look at that. Here it is right here. Time. Giant sundial. A lot of stuff related to time, isn't there? This was called the sunrise and sunset. Remember uh, Aurora? The goddess of the dawn? Pictured in the picture above the mantle of Mr. T himself in his 66th floor penthouse? Look at this. The bringer of the dawn. This is a large sundial, giant sundial. Man arising as dawn touches heaven by woman sinking into Reese with the sun setting, connected with curving lines of time. And remember all the work we did on Planet of the Apes? Well, guess what? There was also ape mockery at the World's Fair. They were called the baboons. Baboon Fountain. Now, to put this in perspective, understand that the Apollo mission in the film Planet of the Apes, there was an arrow. And the arrow that Charlton Heston flew in in Planet of the Apes broke through time, did it not? And there was a disease aspect to that as well. See, the Planet of the Apes franchise. The disease is what caused, it was actually the cure to the disease, is what caused apes to gain the ability to speak, but it also made man turn dumb. And Charlton Heston flew his arrow of Apollo through time to the planet of the apes. Remember, 1939 was decades before Planet of the Apes was ever written about or filmed or came to market. Something is going on here. Baboon Fountain.
next to the hypodermic needle. In contrast, it says here, many of the sculptured groups of the more serious of a more serious character, the baboon fountain was a deliberate attempt to create a humorous effect. It was located in the rear of the metals building in the production and distribution zone. Very creepy. Now back then, not as many people were awake. So they got away with this stuff. Mocking humanity and what they were about to do to us. Now, who else was at this 1939 World's Fair? Well, Prometheus was there. Who was Prometheus? According to legend, Apollo pleaded with his father to let Prometheus go. After Prometheus was bound to a rock for stealing fire from heaven. So you see, almost half of these sculptures relate directly back to Apollo. Without saying Apollo, they're saying it. What else was there? There was another sculpture called Speed. Let me show you that. Now, Speed is often associated with Mercury and Hermes. And they relate right back to Apollo as well. Here is Speed, the Speed Sculpture. Let's take a look at how this fits in. Mercury in mythology. So, who are Hermes and Mercury? They're both actually the same god. One Greek, one Roman. And here you can see that Apollo gave Mercury a magic wand. Sounds a lot like Hollywood, right? Hollywood is a magic wand. It's the wood that they use to make wands. And look what happened to the magic wand. It eventually turned into a caduceus. The staff with intertwined snakes. This is our symbol for modern medicine. Are you starting to see what's going on here? The creating of disease with an arrow and then curing it? The requirement of sacrifice, trying to be like the Most High, which did away with that through, the, through Jesus' sacrifice. The caduceus, all of this. Now, for those of you that didn't already come to the conclusion, Apollo is the devil himself. The god of music. Remember, Satan was a musical demigod. I think it's pretty clear at this point. So, I'm glad we got to redo the show in its entirety. And hopefully the whole show came through. That's the most bizarre thing I've ever seen seen happen before. Where it said I was live, but I wasn't. And they basically took it offline before I even was able, before the show even began. I guess they didn't. They underestimated our desire to get this information out. So at least we were able to get it out. But let's do a fly over here. Of this whole area again. Because this is crazy. There's the crown right there. Almost looks like a crown of thorns. Like a mockery. There's the perisphere, unisphere from 1939 and 1964. Unreal. Let's go back into the chat. Hang out for a bit. Sorry for those of you that waited and waited. And saw nothing. And you waited. Uh, so hopefully we're back on track. Do you guys have any questions or observations. Before we end the show today. Let that catch up. I'll pin all of these links in the comments. So that you can have the proof that you need to show everyone the connections to all this. Here, this is the religious, not the religious, but the spiritual aspect to all this. This is what is behind, this is the spirit behind what we're going through right now. And I think we pretty much were able to put together a very convincing explanation as to why where all this comes from 
All right, let's let that catch chat catch up. Believe it or not, I think we probably presented this better than the first time. So that's what happens. I don't give up. Because I'm powered by the most high. And um, so we don't ever give up on exposing evil. So make me do it again. I'm just going to do it better the next time. All right. Thanks, Pepper. Says thanks for the depth of the study. Thanks, Warrior for Truth. A remnant, Marcy, Rich, Randy. Yes, Artemis. This is huge, you guys. This points back to everything we've been talking about. Oh, wow, there was an article today talking about Apollo. We've been tracking this now for a couple years. So, it's not just trying to connect things that aren't there. We've been watching this. Thanks, Radar World says never give up. So, thanks Tammy, there's Don, J.K. Bell, there's Amy, Artemis, Anthony, Jaded, Jace. Do you guys have any questions before we leave here? Someone says Artemis is the 5G whiz. Now it's crazy, they've been attaching to all of our recent shows that we've done. They've been attaching this uh, disclaimer underneath the video. Talking about K-E-W. Like, why would they do it? We don't even mention that. And if we do, we call it like a ball that was is like on a um, the white ball that you play pool with. That's the only time we've even said the name. So these algorithms have gotten more sophisticated. And it's kind of creepy because look at the trouble they're going through. That says it all right there. Look at the trouble they're going through. Now, they're probably honest about KEW because we've exposed that the whole thing was a honey trap. We've exposed that. And the mainstream media is admitting it. The leader of one of the groups was now they're saying he was an informant the whole time. He was selling out the people that were joining the group. So they're admitting it, but we were already saying this before. So... This is what's going on. It's basically everything's imploding right now. Okay, what else do we have here? Now, if you're interested in the tip of the arrow, the spear of Apollo, and the images that you saw in Google Earth and how we connected the T family and their whole legacy to that Queens area, then there's another video I have up. I think it's going viral. And it's all about that. We went into Google Earth and we looked at all the aspects of that arrow written right into the landscape of Google Earth that exposes the whole thing. All right. Yeah, exactly right, William. It says the channels that all they do is talk about it, they don't, they don't even have the disclaimer because they don't want you to wake up to the right-left paradigm. That's why. I'm more dangerous to them because I expose the game. Are there any significant ley lines? Eh, that's a good question. I was wanting to kind of look at that. I think we exposed the orientation of this in a previous video. Let's draw some lines here while we're here. While I got you guys here. Most of you guys are still here. Okay. No way. That can't be. Are you kidding me? You're kidding. What? This alignment. Is that 158 degrees? This is 158 degrees, you guys. There's our 58 again. That's like 157-ish. That's weird, because what is it all about, right? 5G whiz. That's 5-7. Let's, let's, let's get this exact. I don't want to... 
I want I want to make sure this is good. Okay. Sometimes in order to do this in Google Earth, you have to. Uh, okay, let's get that right in the middle there. That's the alignment right there. That goes under fifty-seven. Great grab whoever asked me to line this up let's move this right to there right in the middle 157.66 degrees wow these people are all about alignments so there's your five seven and if we turn the 3d off uh, let's see here bam sometimes we get a better more accurate alignment by turning the 3d off sometimes okay that needs to go right there right between those all right and this goes right here right to there yeah 157 degrees now oftentimes i'll also do the uh measurement in the other direction Turn the 3D back on so you guys can see this. That'd be 337 in the other direction. Now here's another alignment here. Let's move over here. This is actually the main thoroughfare of the former World's Fair. Okay, that's here. So let's get that measurement. I think we had already discovered that this was aligned to 166 degrees or 66 degrees, which falls right in line with the other things we were talking about. Yep, there it is right there. So this one is 66 degrees. Let's get the alignment here. So that's the 66th floor penthouse of Apollo. Now many people are on to other things. Some people get triggered. If I keep talking about the T-Man... But guess what? He the venom is out there. The venom is being used as we speak right now. So it's not over till it's over. Okay. So that's the 66 degree alignment of the World's Fair, which points back to everything we've been talking about. Wow. Wow, it's almost exactly 66.06 .06 degrees. Wish I could zoom this in. Unbelievable. 66.06 .06 degrees. Huh. There it is right there. Now let's zoom this out. Okay. You guys can see this whole thing go down. Look at this. Look at that. That points back to let's see what let's see where this ends over here. Let's see what goes. Let's extend this out. 66 degrees. Where does this point? This is the world's fair. What is this? What? 66 degrees, where does it point? What's this? It's an island. Whoa. Wait, this is Governor's Island. Is this where the... No, wait, hold on. Oh, there's a Statue of Liberty over there. That points to Governor's Island at 66 degrees. Here's the Statue of Liberty, but that's 69 degrees, so that's different. This is 66 degrees right here. Zoom this out. Alignments are real, you guys. They're very real. Turn off the roads. So I appreciate you guys hanging in there. Sorry for the hiccup this morning. And, whoa, look at this. Okay, that's 69 degrees still. 670 degrees. Governor Island. Okay. All right, let's go back in the chat. 
These are the builders. Now they talk about the builders here in. It's one of the sculptures of the 1939 World's Fair. The builders of the future. Standing in the Court of Roses in the front of the business in the industrial building, the statue was intended to suggest tomorrow's builders, their aspirations and ideas. Look at the builders. Oh, that's in front of the other sundial. There's the builders. One of them's holding a baby. That's kind of creepy. So, these are the builders. And they're on a horse. Builders of tomorrow. All right. Okay, what else do we have here? Ley lines are most important. Yes, I agree. 100%. And it's important to the elite. I think that what they're doing with the ley lines is tricking us about the shape of the planet. And so a lot of these ley lines, they're basically put there to make for them as guide guide marks for them to continue the lie about the shape of the planet, right? So and if they can build upon these ley lines, it, it almost creates an optical illusion or optical effect that, that that they want to promote the Baal Earth model, right? And so that's what I believe is up with these ley lines. They're guideposts. They're almost like uh, snapping a line of sight, so that they can correctly distribute the cities and everything to to promote the lie. Okay, it's almost equivalent to uh, a camera shot. You know, like when you're in Hollywood, they do a certain angles of people's faces and stuff like that. And as far as I, I know, that's probably what's going on. We did a lot of work on ley lines and people are like, well, what does that look like on, a, in, on an earth that's, that's flat? And I'm like, well, it probably looks similar because all you're looking at is a smashed down globe, but they're going to, they're going to curve. So when they show us this, the only difference is, is that it curves. That's all. So that's the lie, right? Now, I don't know any of this, but that's what I'm thinking is probably going on with ley lines. Now, we don't spend a lot of time on the earth and this and the shape because I believe that the extra focus on it and putting all your eggs in that basket and that's all you ever talk about is part of a PSYOP to where they want you to um, get distracted from other things, okay? There are people that this is all they talk about. They won't talk about anything else. And here's the problem. You and I know, but it's hard to explain to someone. In other words, there hasn't been a sufficient amount of um, ways that we can definitively explain to somebody. And immediately they will just discredit everything else that you talk about if you start talking about the shape of the earth. Now, here's the interesting thing. YouTube will often put a disclaimer up under videos who talk about this. So that tells you everything you need to know. And I would compare that to, remember back 10 years ago when all the channel would talk about are UFOs, right? UFOs, UFOs. Well, now they've disclosed all that, that it is real and true. So now it makes more sense to talk about this thing because it has become mainstream knowledge. Okay. And one day this will become mainstream too. They'll do some kind of disclosure. They've already started talking about it. They're already started saying, well, it's not exactly round. It's like a football. They've already, mainstream science is already saying this. Well, which is it? Is it round or is it a football? So already they're trying to start to flatten everything out. But when that time comes, then you spend the time on it. And we have so many videos on the inner eye earth model that basically says it's more of a flat-ish kind of shape. Like a tiered cake with flat levels. So I'll let you look into that in the body code series if you're interested in that. But that's why we don't spend so much time on it. So... Yeah, people are saying it's the key to salvation. No, it's not. 
Exactly. It's that's that is part of the psyop. That's what they want you to believe because then you're immediately discredited by 80, 70, 80% of anyone. They're not even going to listen to anything you have to say if you lead with that. You can't lead with that. That comes later in the discussion. So that, those are my feelings on it. That's why we don't spend so much time on it. Yes, Amy, convex lens. It's, it looks like a tiered cake. That's my personal belief because it looks like the inner eye earth model. All right, what else do we have here? All right, I love each and every one of you. I hope you guys all have a great day. This is kind of a long show, so I'm going to end it here. I've been on here basically for three hours. So have a great day, everybody. We'll be back on here tomorrow because what's going on tomorrow? Well, somebody sent me this. That's what we're going to talk about tomorrow. They, there's they shut down this mass VC site because of a few protesters. We're going to talk about why they shut it down. They don't want the truth to get out. They don't want people reading the signs, going, "Wow, let me look that up," and then seeing that it's the case. Have a great day, everybody. <laughs>